I don't think just because somebody belongs to a category that we hate, that that means that we have to like categorically deny every single possible thing that they say, right? Like, I'm a Nazi because I drink water and Hitler drank water. Like, I'm a transphobe because I acknowledge this thing and and um, Turks say this thing. Like, I, I don't think that's a healthy way forward for conversations because it puts us in this. Well, the difference is that trans women are women and you're a man. But that, but when we when we're talking about like sports, we're not talking about what somebody identifies as. We're talking about their physiology, right? When we say trans women are women, we don't mean they're biological women. We mean that they identify as women, as a gender um, identity, not like as a physiological sex or whatever. See, the thing with me that bothers me the most, that prevents me from like fully conceding. This actually has happened in the past, right? Yeah. It's a very, very dangerous situation to be in. And not a single person there was trying to transition. Not a single person. And what? she was like, this doesn't feel like a community for me at all. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be in or whatever. And then, yeah. Hello, hello. Hey, well, it's nice to talk to you. Um, yeah. I've been really looking forward to this. So I really want to thank you for having me on this platform. Um... Okay, well, yeah, I, I don't really know what we're talking about. You said you emailed me and you talked to a few other people and you listed some topics and yeah, yeah I guess. You, who have you... Yeah, I literally, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, go for it. Uh, I literally was like writing down all of these different things, but um, I'm a transgender woman. So that's a good way to introduce myself. I transitioned early, so when I was 14. And I think that gives me a really interesting perspective when it comes to trans issues. Um, and I just noticed in your, you know, in your community, there's like this big divide you know, a lot of trans people haven't been super cool with you recently. And I don't think you're transphobic at all, but a lot of people seem to think so. And then there's like a few like specific topics where it's like, I don't 100% agree with you, but I there's some things I want to discuss because obviously with the platform that you have, you know, the stuff that you're saying, you know, so. Okay, gotcha. Um, cool. Well, where do you want to, where do you want to start? So the first thing I want to start off with is obviously, you seem to be a very pro-trans person from what I can tell. But when I go to your channel, like there's like five videos that are like, oh, this is why trans people shouldn't be allowed to play in sports. Ooh, let me, um, this is why a trans woman, you know, you, didn't you just debate somebody like the most recent video on your channel was like advocating for like a trans woman, like shouldn't transition early or like the restrictions should be put in place for like hormones and stuff. I don't remember, it's possible, I don't. Oh, okay. So my guess, my thought process on that is I don't necessarily like disagree with you when you say those things, but I do you like, do you understand how someone can look at those things and then see that and then think that you're like transphobic or whatever? Yeah, of course. I mean, this is like the nature of doing online content. Um, <clears throat> I understand like the, that thought, but like, I'm, I, I'm trying to find a balance between how much I should care about and how much I don't care about. I used to really care about this kind of stuff, and now I'm kind of moving back towards that I don't really care about this kind of stuff. I think that if you've engaged with any of my content for any amount of time, or if you ask anybody that honestly has, I think it's pretty obvious that I'm not transphobic and that anybody that watches my content for an extended period of time is not going to take that from me. Um, the idea that I need to have, like, in the fucking, like, roster, like, five pro trans videos ready to go every time I'm critical of, like, something that comes out is, like, a little bit, eh. But I, I understand like what you're saying. It's like if I go to a certain channel and I see like 10 videos criticizing BLM, even though I shouldn't, I'm probably gonna assume the guy is, <laughs> if he's not racist, he probably just hates BLM, even if that's not necessarily the case, you know? Yeah, it just gets it's to bummed. a certain point where it's like, even if that's not your intention, it feels like it feels like you're on the same side as the terse, even if you're not particularly, because at some point you're making those same talking points. And when you're making those talking points, you know, maybe you're attracting a certain type of person you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's possible. But hey, I mean, I consider okay. that a pro if I am, because then hopefully I convert them later on, but. I hope so too. Um, I just, I mean, there's so much I can get into. Um, the first thing obviously would be the trans sports thing. So I've heard you say in the past that you think that trans women shouldn't be allowed to compete in college sports. Um, but like, for instance, there's this one woman who's like dominating the competition and people love to talk about like Leah Thomas or something like that. But the thing is, like, it's not just her. There's like hundreds of other trans kids who aren't dominating, literally just want to have fun and participate in the doing stuff that they love. I think and that you want the, to take um, that away from them. Yeah, I think I that, don't understand that having fun in sports and like doing it as like a social activity and all that, I think that's a really positive thing um, for yeah. grade school, high school, and for recreational leagues. 
But I think once we get to college, I think we've moved on past that a little bit. It's not just a for fun thing anymore. Um, people are playing with the potential to go pro. There's an incredibly limited number of slots. People are on scholarships. Like I think that the nature of athletics changes quite a bit once you get to NCAA level sports. And maybe that is the case, but at the same time, like not every trans athlete is Leah Thomas. And we also have to dis- like discredit the notion that trans women have the same advantages as cisgender men because you might not, obviously, you know, it might not be 100%, you know, the same as cis women. But taking hormones do reduce the testosterone. They do reduce that physical advantage. So yeah, to I mean, say they it's do. the same thing with no, the dishonest. I mean, yeah. yeah, I never would say it's the same thing. That's why I always say it's a conundrum because like a trans woman will never be competitive with a cis male, right? It's because you're, you've completely and totally destroyed your T levels. Uh, I say destroyed, but if you're trying to transition, right? You don't want the T levels of a, of a male. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's true. But like, it seems that they exist in an uncomfortable in-between because you still have pretty big physiological advantages over cis women when you're trans women, so hence the difficulty. Well, honestly, I don't think it'd be that major, right? Like, we've only really ever seen a handful of cases in how many years, you know, this has really been a thing. And even if that were to be the case, like, I don't think it's like this huge, like, issue that people think it is, right? Obviously, I will be completely honest. When I see Leah Thomas, I cringe inside. I worry about all the transphobes that are gonna, you know, come from that and be like, oh no, trans women shouldn't have rights. Let's well, go so to like, the I don't think, next. let's go to the prisons. Yeah, I, I mean, that's bad, but I mean, people on the left only have themselves to blame for making that the focal point. Like, I think it should be easy to be like, yeah, you know, trans women probably shouldn't compete with cis women um, for athletic events. And then you just leave it. And then you don't have to worry about that. But when people decide that they want to fight on these grounds to the death, then I mean, yeah, that's naturally what's gonna happen because other people are gonna look and feel like, okay, well, hold on, this is crazy. I don't know what's going on, you know? Well, this isn't, well, to be honest, this isn't like a hill I want to die over, right? Yeah, like, but it feels like the, the day, problem is it if, feels like a lot of people do want to die on it. And then if they're going to, they're, then people are going to die on that hill, right? Well, I wouldn't agree on that. And that's very bad optics, in my opinion. It's just, to me, it's like people look at one extreme example, and then they act like that's everybody. And it's like, you can play in college for fun. Like, you know what well, I'm saying? I don't know if that's true. Um... I, 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 I think that once you've hit, um, once you're into college sports, I think things are fundamentally quite a bit different um, in, in terms of the level of competition and in terms of like why you're playing. Um, again, like if you want to just play for fun, um, you can just play in a recreational league, right? Why, why do you need an NCAA spot, you know? That's well, why like, would... I'm in favor of like grade school, high school and recreational leagues. But I think when you're an NCAA athlete, I think, I think that the balance of everything changes a bit me it's not necessarily like to me it's more about like where this represents like if we stand on that point alone it's not a huge issue and i could i could be okay with that but to me that like spreads this idea that like trans women are stronger and more dangerous and it just you give in once you give an inch to these turf types you know they run with it yeah but do you see like that's that's more than anything else yeah but what you just said was like the the huge issue that i have that is true like trans women are stronger they are more physiologically equipped than cis women um and if we refuse to acknowledge that then you're in this weird world where i can either listen to like trans advocates that are delusional or i can listen to transphobes who at the very least are like talking about reality that's a scary thing i don't think that we should like seed the reality ground because it like might lead us to a couple of uncomfortable places. I don't think that's good. Well, I'm not, first, personally, I'm not going to deny that reality. There probably is still some type of advantage there, right? Like, I'm not blind to the science. I'm not blind to the facts. Um, but at the same time, I do think, like, you don't have to give in to the turfs to be like, okay, turfs, you were right about this one. And then say, if you don't do that, then you're doing the turfs win. Because it's a situation where it's like, if you agree the turfs win, if you disagree the turfs win. And, like, that doesn't seem right to me. Well, you like people like <clears throat> Hitler was probably right about a couple of things, right? Racists are probably right about a couple of things. Transphobes are probably right about a couple of things. I don't think just because somebody belongs to a category that we hate that that means that we have to like categorically deny every single possible thing that they say, right? Like I'm a Nazi because I drink water and Hitler drank water. Like I'm a transphobe because I acknowledge this thing and and um, turfs say this thing. Like, I, I don't think that's a healthy way forward for conversations because it puts us in this really weird world where like we we can't acknowledge anything now because if our if the people that we don't like hold a certain belief somehow we have to always take the contrary stance even if even if they might be correct about something. Like I, I don't know. I, I think that's a really bad way to approach conversations. So 
I see what you're trying to say, but I don't think the comparison is necessarily one to one because obviously TERFs can say like women deserve equal rights and that would be fair. But the TERFs are saying something that's anti-trans women. That'd be like saying, I agree with Hitler about the Jews. That would be an awful thing to say regardless of what he said. Well, sure, now, but like here's like, but like TERFs might say like we should like, I, like I don't want trans people to destroy women's spaces, which is a big like TERFy argument. Um, which is fine. I don't think anybody wants to destroy women's spaces. But then if we say, um, well, actually, you know, we don't care about any biological advantages or anything in sports, like anybody should be able to do whatever they want. Well, now we kind of are, right? So now we've kind of like validated the turfy argument that, well, there are some women's spaces that we want to get rid of, I guess. Well, that's exactly what I'm saying. I mean, when you say that, yeah, we should, you know, trans women shouldn't be in this specific woman's space and we need to reserve it for women only, that just gives in for the way for the church to be like, all right, we won this. Let's move on to the next thing where it's like, I don't even think trans women, like if there's ever a time where it's like nine trans women competing against one cis woman in like the college debate fight or whatever. Sure. Maybe I'll agree with you. I don't think that's ever going to be the case. Yeah, but right. Like, even if that was, but firstly, if it ever got to that point, it'd be too late to go back. So that's the first like kind of spooky thing, I guess, from their perspective. Um, and then I guess like secondly, like it wouldn't even have to be that dramatic. And also thirdly, it's not necessarily about like the performance or the results. It's more just like, you know, what is what is fair, right? Like there are probably like, I'm sure that if I played volleyball against most women, I, I would probably lose. Cause I don't even know how to fucking play volleyball, right? But that's not like, okay, well, you know, as long as he doesn't win, you know, destiny can go and compete in the women's leagues and that's okay, right? That's not how that works, you know? Well, the difference is that trans women are women and you're a man. But that, but when we when we're talking about like sports, we're not talking about what somebody identifies as. We're talking about their physiology, right? When we say trans women are women, we don't mean they're biological women. We mean that they identify as women, as a gender um, identity, not like as a physiological sex or whatever. Hey, see, the thing with me that bothers me the most, that prevents me from like fully conceding, is there was a time in the past where sports divisions were segregated by race. I mean, you look at the NFL now; it's like seventy percent black, but no one is out here saying. Ooh, we should say like no one's saying that there should be separate leagues. Do you that think would be that, insanely racist. Do you think that white people can't compete with black people in sports? Well, obviously they can. I think cis women can compete with trans women. Well, that's a different but I that's mean, but that's, that's my personal opinion. Yeah, but that's not the case, right? That's the difference, right? White people and black people can be competitive with each other in sports, but like trans women have like very real, like significant physiological advantages over cis women when it comes to athletics. I think that's the difference. Like a racial division is not fair because there there's no um there there's nothing that says that like uh, like black people will always outperform like you you pointed out like the NFL is seventy percent black right if there were a mixture of male and, of men and women in one sport it wouldn't be seventy percent men and thirty percent it would be not, it would be one hundred percent or ninety nine point nine percent men and like point one percent women maybe like that would be the difference. Well, trans women women's sports is not like ninety nine percent trans women like. No, no, I'm, I'm saying Sometimes if men and women were to compete with each other, like, when we talk about, like, a racial... Well, yeah, yeah, but we're talking about cis men and cis women. Like, we've already, you know, you've already said that, like, cis women and... I'm sorry, trans women and cis men are competing at different levels. Like, it's not the same thing. Yeah, of course. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they've hit the level of, like, cis women, right? I think so. I th think that there probably is a difference. Um, I don't think it's statistically enough to like erase women's sports though. I guess that's where we like, and I think in my case, it's probably more important that we don't discriminate against trans women and concede to that point. So it's like, if we disagree about this, that's cool. We can agree to disagree, but that's pretty much where I stand here. Sure. I mean, like, I understand what you're saying, but now we're kind of like, when we say things like this, we're essentially justifying the, the, the turf point where we're like, oh, like, you know, I think that it's more important to um, make sure that we've protected trans spaces, um, even if that comes at the detriment of like women's sports. Now we've basically justified the turf position. Well, I don't, like, I don't believe it comes to the detriment. I mean, well, but if it would, a trans for every, woman becomes for, competitive in something, that's not the end of the world. Well, for every trans woman that takes an NCAA spot, that's gonna be a, a cis woman that doesn't have it, right? Like that's- So are you saying that cis women are more deserving of those spots than trans women are? Yes. Okay, wow. Um, well, because it's because that's how the, the sport separations were made for like physiologically different people, right? Yeah, I mean, I I can see where you're coming from. Um, at the end of the day, like I said, this isn't exactly the hill that I want to die on. 
Um, but I don't think it'll be that statistical difference. But I'll tell you, five years from now, if trans women are dominating all the sports and like cis women are not competitive, then I'll say, you know what? You were right, Destiny. Well, but like, but so firstly, it doesn't do really matter if they dominate or not. That's not the point. But also, um, the um, the issue is that um, if it started to get to that point, it would, um, like, we couldn't go back. Because you're not going to be like, okay, now we need to take trans women out of sports. Because culture, it seems historically, is always kind of moving leftward. Like, at that point, you've, you've completely, if you're the person that's against it, you've completely lost, and that's never changing. Well, obviously, I mean, there's, like, you know, it doesn't happen at once, right? There'll be, like, a three out of ten, and then the next year, there's, like, four out of ten. At some point, you're like, okay, this is a problem. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't think that's going to happen. But if there is a clear case of that happening, then I'm willing to give in and say, okay, maybe we do need to do something. Yeah, about but then this. what? So like, let's say we are at one out of 10 and it's okay. Two out of 10, it's okay. And then we hit like three out of 10 and now it's too much. Do you get rid of all of them then at that point? So now the people that were the one and two out of 10 are fine. Like, I, I, it seems like you're, you're, you're in like a really bad spot at that point, right? Because you can't go back. That's the issue. Well, no, you can't go back, but I mean, we're at a point in society where we're still figuring this thing out. Like, no one has all of the answers. I mean, we're still, like, this is new to everybody, you know? These, you know, college organizations are still finding out, like, what are we going to do about this? You know, is this discriminatory? Is this unfair? Sure. This is women? Yeah, I, I mean, mean, like, we, 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 we are we we're kind of figuring out. some things out. That's true. But, like, the physiological thing is, like, pretty inarguable, right? Like, like I would be shocked if there was any way to overcome that or if, like, something's going to change that in the future. Unless there, the two exceptions being if you do, like, a prepubetic thing um, or if you have, like, a more extreme uh, form of, like, surgery or whatever in the future, then there might be some differences there, but... I guess my thing... Sorry. Go ahead. So the problem with these laws, I guess my real, real issue with this is, like, when this happens, when you see a Leah Thomas or something these laws are going to ban all trans women. And there's no nuance to these laws. These laws don't care about like trans women like me who transitioned at age 14. They don't care about women who went on puberty blockers and didn't transition. So it's like when you have these laws, they're always these blanket statements. These lawmakers do not have trans women's ideas in mind. So you can easily, right, you can say Leah Thomas shouldn't be allowed to compete. And I'll be like, you know what, fair, I'm okay with that, right? I'm not going to cry about it. Um, but when you say every trans woman ever can't compete, then it's like, okay, but like, what about, you know, the trans women who like literally have no advantage because they transitioned early. These laws don't account for that. And it's the same thing with like the bathroom stuff where you have like these ridiculous situations where like these trans men are like being forced into women's restrooms. It's like the same thing for that. Yeah. I mean, so, I don't, I'm not going to disagree. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, I, I don't disagree. I think that the law should be more nuanced, but like you can't fight for the most extreme version. And then when that doesn't get passed and people are pushing the extreme direction back, be like, oh, well, fuck, right? Like, I mean, that's what's gonna happen. Well, I don't believe in the most extreme version. I mean, there are- Well, yeah, but no, like, here's the problem. Who's advocating for trans women that have had, um, that have gone, that have not gone through puberty yet? So trans women that transitioned to pre-puberty, who's advocating for them to play sports, right? Nobody is that you have on one side, you've got people that hate trans people that are advocating to get trans people removed from as many things as possible. And then on the other side, you've got delusional people that are saying, oh, there's no difference between trans women and cis women at all, so they should all compete together. So you, have, you don't even have a, a group of people that are advocating for the more reasonable position. So it doesn't surprise me that like, if, if one side wins, if the left wins, then trans women are just gonna be playing in everything. If the right wins, then you know, trans women are just gonna be removed from everything because no, there, there isn't even a party advocating for the more reasonable middle ground. So I guess let's just be smarter in how we debate these things. And it's like, know where to make these arguments and basically don't be like, oh, you know, because when you say that there's no advantage at all, when you say like, hey, Leah Thomas, you know, dominating isn't a problem, then it's like it only encourages these conservatives to pass these transphobic laws, which is what nobody wants. I mean, I would hope. Well, what yeah. I don't want. I can't yeah, that's the, the issue is I think there's um, probably like a lot of people in the middle that even though because trans issues are still like kind of outside the mainstream, but like. I'm pretty sure, I think, I could convince like an independent that like a trans woman that transitions pre-puberty probably should have some claim to being able to play in sports. I could probably get that. Um, but like if my position is that there's no difference at all, then like uh, that, I've lost that, that argument. I'm never convincing that person or anything. And they're probably not gonna trust oh, anything I say anyway. But. Yeah. So it's really just a situation of like the people who are advocating for this should advocate better, really. Yeah, I mean, I would say so. But.
Okay. So I think I've covered pretty much where it comes to the trans sports thing. Um, the next thing I want to talk about, and this is about like a trans woman, if she doesn't disclose to her partner that she's trans, is that rape? And I think I've heard you on occasion say that is rape. Do you think so? Um, I think if you have surprise genitals for somebody and you're like already engaging in sexual activity and then they find out like mid-sexual activity, yeah, I would say so. Okay. My biggest issue, first of all, before we start this conversation, I want to make it clear, right? Mm -hmm. I do not understand people who are pre-op and like have sexual interactions. I do not get that. Like having dysphoria, you would think that you'd want to not engage in those acts or whatever, right? I mean, I think, opinion, I mean, well, I guess we don't have to talk about it. I mean, I, I can understand how they could, but go ahead. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, I can only speak for myself and not for other people, but I've always just been kind of like, I don't fully get that, but okay. Sure. Um, but when it comes to like my own experiences, the reason I'm like iffy to be like, oh, that's rape, is like, you have a, a situation with me. Like, I've had people who have like, Obama. you know, asked me out or tried to inappropriately touch me. And it's like, I disclose to them that I'm trans, but also like, I have never said that I wanted any romantic relationship and these people are like coming on to me and it's like, I don't consent to this. So what my worry is, is that people look at situations like this where it's like the trans woman is the victim in the situation and then the man basically acts in like rape or, you know, touching genitals and stuff. And then basically after that, oh, it's like, oh, this is a transgender woman. This woman raped me. And it's like, wait a second, what? So this trans woman is literally sitting there doing nothing and you're calling her a rapist when you are sexually assaulting her. And so that's what I want to clarify here because I feel like we can get into situations I'm and that's not, not exactly- I'm, like, I'm not gonna clarify that. I, I, I think it's incredibly obvious what my position would be. And I, I'm, I'm not even, okay. yeah, I'm not even gonna waste my time. Like, you're, like, well, what if somebody goes to get raped and then when they're getting raped, the other person finds something they don't like, like, what, what do you think I'm gonna say? Like, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to make an example is that a lot of the times it's a lot more like a blurred situation. Like, no, you know, what we're talking about is like very said, clearly like a wrong, that's very clearly wrong. There is no blurred well, no, no, line no, no, here. Like, that's fucked up. I'm give you a more blurred example than that because <laughs> sure. obviously that's one extreme and yours is another extreme. Okay. Let's say, do you think like no sexual relationship, right? The trans woman just wants to have a non-sexual normal relationship. Do you think that she should disclose that she's trans? I mean... That's a really rough one. Like, I would say, uh, I don't know if I would give, like, uh, you have to do something there. I, I would say that's a rough one. But, like, I, okay. I, if you don't, I'm not going to say that's rape because you're not having, like, sexual intercourse or anything yet. Or you're not, you're not having any sexual contact yet, right? That's, it's like, that's comparable to, not to make trans sound like a disease, but that's, like, for people that have, like, herpes or HIV, like, do they have to disclose that on the very first date? Like, probably not. But, like, if you're going to have sexual activity, then yeah, probably. Well, I mean, first of all, I mean, you know, those things can actually spread, like, trans as a contagion, but I know that's not what you mean. Um, I would say, like, when it comes to being a transgender woman, a lot of the times there's, like, a safety risk to it, right? Like, if I tell a random guy on the street that I'm trans, like, I, you know, have a reasonable fear that he's going to respond sure. to some kind of retaliation or violence. I would so, never advocate for trans people to just randomly walk around and tell people that they're trans, but okay. No, 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 I, I know, but it's like, you know, when you're, like, close friends with someone or someone, you know, potentially romantic, like, a lot of people have this position that you have to disclose that you're trans right away. And if you don't do so, you're being deceptive. And like, I just, I don't see that. But it seems like we don't disagree that much. I just, I don't see how it's like, even at, at that extreme point, I don't see how it's rape. Like, I think calling it rape kind of like lowers what rape actually is. Hold on, and if I'm having, if, let's say that I'm like, let's say that I'm a lesbian, okay? and I. Like, I just want to have sex with women, and that's, like, my preference. Maybe it's, even, maybe it's a little more deep-seated than that. Maybe I've been abused by men in the past or whatever. We'll say something like that. Not that that makes lesbians. But let's say that is the case. You're a lesbian. Let's say that you meet somebody. You're having a good time at a bar. You take them home. Um, let's say you start fooling around. They go down on you. You go to go down on them, and then you take their pants off and they have a penis. You don't think that person has a right to feel, like, incredibly misled at that point? Well, I think that is a big communication problem. I would say that that person, the trans person in that case, was in the wrong. They should have talked about that before. You know, I wouldn't call it rape, but I do think that there is like a problem there. And I think most people would agree and say like, hey, you know, this isn't cool. But I think when you call it rape, you're just kind of giving into those turf talking points. Be like, look, trans women are rapists. Um, trans well, I don't, women but I don't, I don't, hold on, wait. lesbians to sleep with them. I don't think trans women are rapists. I've never said that. 
I'm, but I'm saying that like if you surprise somebody with a set of genitals, I think that that other person can probably feel like holy shit, like I didn't sign up for this. Like they're, like it could basically feel like rape, right? Like somebody you basically in their mind they had sex with somebody that didn't have the genitals they expected to have, and now they feel you know I don't know what whatever feelings they have about that. I guess depending on how strong they feel about their orientation or whatever. Well, that's I would say that's like a failure in communication. I wouldn't say that that's like rape, though. I, I think that's too far. Like, I, I wouldn't necessarily call it that. Would you call? Would you? How about rapey? How about sexual assault? I think it's. I, I like I said. Like, okay, so I know this is going to sound really weird. So you have a transgender woman, a cisgender woman, and the cis like they're you know about to have like sex or whatever. And then upon about to having, like, they haven't actually had the act, but before they can have the act, they realize, oh, this is a trans woman. I'm not interested, right? That person can easily be like, oh, I'm not interested, and then step out of the situation. So, like, no sexual activity occurred. It was like, oh, there was a miscommunication. I didn't realize you were trans. Should have told me that before. Have a nice day. Which is obviously well within your right to do so. I mean, like, personally, I would do that because I don't give a fuck. If I think I'm gonna have sex with a woman or a man um, and I find out that they're actually like a trans male or a trans woman and I find out, and let's say I'm not into it for whatever reason, yeah, I could say that, sure. Um, but that talking point um, would never, ever, 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 ever be applied to any other sexual circumstance. Like I just got through screaming at a million people because people were saying that like, if you're getting stealth by a man, um, it's too hard to say anything to turn them down. So like to, to pretend that like women aren't even able to do that, but somehow are able to like stop like a sexual encounter in the middle when they discover a set of genitals they weren't expecting, like, I don't know. It just seems like that's a pretty big burden, I think to expect somebody to take on. Well, like I said, I think it, you should definitely be very clear to be like, you know, before you have sex with someone, you should definitely tell that person. Because when you get to those surprises, bad things happen. It's not good for anyone involved. Obviously, it's a really disgusting situation. Yeah, which is why I don't even think this is a problem that like 99% of like grass touching trans people don't have this problem. Because if you're no. a normal trans person, you don't want to be in a situation where the other person is fucking shit. Because this is how actual like... um like trans people are killed in sexual encounters is when somebody finds out like, oh my God, they're trans and now I'm a oh, guy exactly. and I'm gay and I'm gonna kill you or whatever. Yeah, this actually has happened in the past, right? Yeah. It's a very, very dangerous situation to be in. Yeah. Um, so I wanna move on to my next point if that's okay with you. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so the next situation, do you think that young children should be allowed to transition? Do you think this is dangerous? Do you think that there's like a movement Harming, like, I, I want to know what your opinion on this is. So here's the hard thing. If you are trans, you will definitely know that you're trans. You but just because you think you're trans place. doesn't necessarily mean you're trans as growing up. So I think that's like, I think that's the challenge. Um, I would say that because of all of the advantages of transitioning pre-puberty, I think that it would be really nice if kids could transition. I just think there needs to be like a good process in there with like a lot of research and validation to back up like, you know, is this a good idea or is this not a good idea? Or is this person actually experiencing gender dysphoria or is this gender dysphoria that they think they're experiencing a placeholder for some other problem? So yeah, I mean, I, I think kids should be able to transition. I just think we have to be really careful about like creating good processes by which they can explore those feelings and then figure out if it's the right decision or the wrong decision for them. would agree in the sense that yes obviously i think trans people should be able to transition young and i'm a prime example of that you know i transitioned at 14 you know i'm 22 now so obviously i knew that i was trans right i agree with you in the sense that like you know trans women have female brains trans men have male brains some people in the trans community not a fan of that logic but it's always been true for me um my thing is right when you have a situation where you know you're allowing trans women to transition Obviously, there's going to be some inevitable people who think that they're trans, but they're not. The issue I have is that there are some people who take those, you know, maybe like one to five percent. I don't know the exact number, but it's not like a huge percentage, it's a small percentage. They'll take those voices and then act like all of a sudden all trans women aren't valid. Oh, this person just transitioned. So therefore, you yeah, know, I you mean, I understand that like we're running into the same argument. Yeah. Like, I understand that there are people that do that. But I think that part of the reason why is because th it feels like sometimes they're the only people that are willing to have those conversations. When you're unwilling to have a conversation because you're so scared about sounding like the bad guy, then the only people that are gonna have that conversation are gonna be the bad guys. 
I think that's the issue. So like I've talked to two detransitioners on my stream before. They were interesting chats, but I think that like one of the saddest things was that um, they can't talk to anybody besides like hardcore conservatives because people want to take their stories and use it to say like, look, they, this is a mistake. We're forcing people to get surgery. Like fuck them. This is horrible and disgusting and trans people shouldn't exist. So then you get people on the left. They're like, okay, well, I'm never talking to a detransitioner because these people are just conservative fodder. And now you've basically made it so that, okay, well, nobody can have good conversations about detransitioning now because we basically said the only people who are allowed to talk about it are hardcore conservatives that hate trans people. Well, here's the thing with that, right? Like, I think that we should 100% have a platform for like, like, if we can have like, trans people talk to detransitioners, and we can intelligently have these conversations. I think that's better for everybody. Because when these transit, these detransitioners, they run to turfs, they're going to side with them and that they're going to give them like, you yeah. know. But I mean, like, I understand points. why they would run to TERFs. It's probably because TERFs are the only ones that are willing to listen because everyone on the left wants to say like, oh, no, like your experience is fake or whatever. Like you can't like, yeah, which I think is. Well, good. I believe that. I think that we I think that there's a way to acknowledge that their experiences are valid while also acknowledging that like, hey, you know, you might have detransitioned, but like this is good for most trans people. And like two things can both be true at the same time. And I think, you know, and I honestly think more trans people should be better about this. And I think that doing so would be a huge benefit for us. Yeah, I mean, I would agree. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's really cool. Um, I think that a lot of the, I think that the newer age ideas around trans identities have made these conversations really hard for people to have. The idea that like every identity is valid and you're trans just because you identify as trans, et cetera, et cetera. That when you have things like this, I think it makes it harder to... Um, acknowledge like real trans people and acknowledge um, transitioners or detransitioners or whatever because like the idea the concept of detransitioning is impossible because anybody can be anything they want so why would you ever detransition I think that's like an issue that I have with like the more contemporary like Twitter trans discourse I think that there is definitely a problem with like you know being toxic and that's the thing like I made a YouTube video about like detransitioners and in that video like I'm very like towing the line of like you know, people talking about their experiences online are going to feel terse, but that doesn't mean they shouldn't be allowed to talk about them. Yeah. It's like, you know, when people are detransitioning, that doesn't automatically mean that they're like anti-trans. And it's like, when you get to the point where it's like, hey, you know, I'm a trans woman, it's like, you choose to transition, I support you, right? Like, that's where we need to be. Sure. Okay, cool. So the next thing I want to talk about, it's going to be a little, okay, so... First of all, what's happening in Ukraine is awful. It's terrible. Um, lots of innocent people losing their lives. But a lot of people don't seem to like talk about the fact that like Ukraine right now, if a trans woman tries to leave the country, they're not letting them leave. And so like to me as a trans woman, I look at that and I'm like, this is this awful thing happening that I don't really see these news medias talking about. It's like they're basically saying, if you're a trans woman, you have to stay in this country and fight whereas cisgender women get to leave. So I feel like this is a prime example of like trans women being discriminated against. Um, yeah, I mean, it probably is, but I mean, I imagine <clears throat> there's probably a lot of different things that people are focused on right now. And so this is not something they're focused on as much, but yeah, I mean. I just think in the sense that where it's like trans women are women and it's like, oh, well, your, your passport isn't updated. So therefore you get to stay in this country and basically oh, go ahead and die. Like that's essentially like the play, the entire country is like being bombed and it's like, oh, you're trans, sorry. Yeah, I mean, that's just, like, I mean, it sucks, no but I mean like, um, yeah, I mean like it's, they're, they're obviously on a whole different like social value system than we are, I would imagine, right? Yeah, I just, like I said, I just wish more people would be like, hey, this is like a, this is a problem. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but the last thing, I mean, there's a few other things, but one of the other things I want to talk about is like, in a lot of feminist spaces, I don't necessarily feel included as a trans woman. Like a lot of like feminist terms, like, oh, no uterus, no opinion. Okay, that's like an explicitly like exclusionary to trans women like phrase. Oh, like, you know, love the body, the way you were in when you were born. I see that a lot in feminist spaces. If I love the body I was born, I wouldn't be trans. And it's like, am I overthinking this? Maybe. But it's like, it's, I find it hard for me to like get along in these spaces when a lot of the language they use feels like it's like exclusionary to me. And like, I haven't really seen anyone else like talk about this, but it, it's just like something that it's kind of bothered me. And I don't know how to say it without like, you know, coming off wrong. 
Um, I mean, it would depend on the space, I guess. That like, if there was like a like if there was like a support group for like pregnant women, and I guess like trans women were trying to join, then I could understand like cis women being like, "Wait, what the fuck is going on?" But if it's just like a general like woman space, then that seems kind of weird too. I guess it would just depend on the space. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I've tried to go to like feminist spaces in the past, or I've even tried to go to like LGBT spaces in the past. And I've just, every time I've gone there, I've just felt so excluded. And I'm just feeling like, you know, I, I always get this weird feeling. It's like, you're not supposed to be here. And I feel like I shouldn't be feeling that way. And it's like, why is it that as a transgender woman, I'm constantly feeling like my my like opinion isn't valid. It isn't like I will get like these weird looks. Like I always have this like worrying feeling and it's like, it's cool. Like I respect, you know, feminism. I respect, you know, women's rights and everything. It's just, I don't know. I'm in this weird spot. I don't know what to say. Like, um, I mean, I would have to like know like what the space and what was going on, obviously, right? I can't, I can't just make blanket statements. Um, I, I imagine if you're in a, I don't know if there are like turfy areas in the United States, but if you're in a really, really turfy area, then you're probably going to have people that are like pretty exclusionary in feminist spaces towards trans women, if that's a thing. Um, most of the emails that I've gotten from trans people and the experiences seem to say that the trans spaces are really toxic, but, I, but that just might be a difference in yeah. who emails me. So I don't, it's hard to say. I don't know. Oh yeah. I, I just want to go on that. I've been to like LGBT trans support groups and it's like, I hate to say this cause it's going to make me sound so cringy, but like, honestly, I've cringed so hard when I go to LGBT support groups. Like when I go there, I think to myself like, Oh, these are people who are like just transitioning and I'm like such in a different spot from them. Yeah. And that was like, the main thing that I got over and over again was that like, like it's all going to be either it's almost exclusively pre tree pre tree pre-transitioners fuck whenever you go to these spaces so it's very hard it's like people that are asking like for early advice on drugs or stuff like that or people that maybe will never even transition so if you're like a trans person that's either through transitioning um or you're on your way through transitioning they, these communities don't really feel like they're meant for you much is what it seems like that's what a lot of people have yeah 100 percent. i'll go there and feel like these are not my people like this is not where i belong and it's like wow why is the trans community so cringy like these are the people i interact with on twitter damn sure. um but yeah, um, let's see. So I just want to like, okay. So last thing I'm going to talk about really is like the whole like platforming thing. Now, first of all, I am all for talking with controversial figures. I'm all for having intelligent conversations. Um, I've interviewed Mr. Girl, right? You know, I interviewed him before you did actually. Mm -hmm. um, so like, I am all for like, you know, and he would say to me like, I don't think trans people are really valid. And I'd be like, okay. Um, <laughs> So I'm okay with that, um, but like I just want to know like your perspective. Like when you've debated people who are like anti-trans, like how, wh what do you think is like the most effective like thing to do? Like how do you feel about debating these people? You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, it's it depends on who they are. It depends on where they're at, and it depends on what my goal is for the conversation. You have the exact time and place. Okay. Like if I like if I'm having a debate on something not at all related to trans issues and the person I'm talking to is transphobic, that's probably not going to come up because we're just that's just not the topic of the conversation. Um, if it's somebody that just has like some questions about like should children be allowed on puberty blockers, but they're otherwise okay with trans people, it's probably not going to be that bad of a conversation. I can probably pull them over generally on that. Um, but yeah, that, it's just it's going to depend on who I'm talking to and what the topic is and everything. It's going to be pretty contextual. Do you ever worry though, like? So I, I just want your opinion. Do you ever worry that there's ever a point where it's like, oh no, I'm like platforming this person's transphobic idea and these people that are watching are more likely to believe this? Or do you believe that having these conversations is like beneficial to like helping people, you know, be less transphobic? Because um, that's like, I think a big conversation that we're having right now. Like, is this better or worse? Like, yeah, no, I never worry about that. Um, I think I'm correct on most of the things I talk about. Um, so I'm not worried about talking to other people who disagree with me. Right. But I, I mean, like, I would say that I agree with you for the most part, but like when you, I guess the big conversation is like when you platform these people, do you think like you're, there's going to be some people in the audience who are like, Ooh, I actually agree with this person. Or do you think it's better to just like 
end this I mean, conversation inevitably, just debunk their points. I mean, inevitably, there's always going to be some. Like, I can't say that I have a 100% success rate. But I mean, like, that's just part of life. I mean, I can't guarantee that any of my fans right now aren't going to stumble onto some transphobic content or something, right? Like, it could happen naturally without it happening on my stream. So at the very least, I'd want them to get it on my stream first so that they can hear the proper pushbacks against it instead of never having heard anybody on the left address any of those points. Okay. Um... I think that's honestly pretty much mostly what I had to say. Um, the last thing I want to say is like real quick, like mm -hmm. I don't believe in neo pronouns and I think that that's an important thing to address because I see a lot of these people on Twitter basically be like, oh, you know, I don't think that's the same as being trans. And I think when you conflate the same as being trans, I think that's like a very dangerous thing because it spreads harmful ideas. But whenever I like talk to people on Twitter, they're like, oh, you're a bigot, you're a transphobe. And I'm literally sitting to myself, it's like, I'm just a trans woman. Like when these people use these like not real genders or not real like, you know, pronouns and stuff, it just it gives people misinformation on what being trans is and harms the trans community. Sure. I mean, I think personally, I think neo pronouns are cringe as fuck. But if people want to argue for them, that's fine. I just don't like it when they call it all trans. Like it seems like like we've come pretty far in the international and national discourse about trans people. We've come really far. Um, and now it seems like people want to build off the success of that movement by basically just adding on as much shit that they personally believe in onto it. So it kind of sucks that like when we're finally getting around some people to have like non cringy representations of trans people in mainstream media and everything that now like other people are like, Oh cool. Well, if you believe in that, you should also believe that like my gender is autism. And it's like, okay, I don't know. So cringe. Yeah, I mean, my thing is, okay, so I've heard you say in the past that there's a lot of people who haven't had, like, a lot of, like, lived experience, and it's obvious, like, when you talk to them. Mm -hmm. So the problem is that there's a lot of these people on Twitter, there's a lot of these people online, right? Whereas for someone like me, I've dealt with a lot of stuff. Like, I've been on other streams before, I've gotten a lot of harassment on stuff, and mm -hmm. I'm used to it, you know? So when people... Any awful thing anyone's ever said, like, I've heard it before, it doesn't really phase me that much, because it's like, okay, whatever. Sure. Um, so... You know, I feel like you have to grow a thick skin and being trans can help you get there. But it's like when you have so many trans people online who just do not understand, like, you know, the stuff that they're saying is such bad optics or, you know, or how bad they're making the other trans people look. It's like, how am I supposed to get through to them? Because usually when I talk to them on Twitter, it never ends well. They'll like block me or they'll just say these like... How am I supposed to have an honest conversation with these people? Because a lot of the time they'll just say all this awful shit. They'll call me names. Like, I mean, I think they'll I, probably I they'll probably use some of the same arguments that you were kind of using earlier, where they'll say like, "Well, I don't think that my opinions or my conversation should be dictated by the people that hate me, right?" Like, I'm not going to not have an opinion on neo pronouns just because you know you're worried that somebody transphobic might listen to them and have a different idea, maybe. Okay. Not to say that I would agree with that, but I mean, that's, I imagine that's the yeah. word I would use. You? I just, at the end of the day, my end goal as being a trans woman is like, I literally just want to be seen as normal. And so oftentimes I see in trans communities, like that seems to like not be people's goal. Like people are like, no, I'm proud of being trans. I'm not proud of being trans. If I could be a cis woman, mm -hmm. I would be. Is that yeah. so awful to say? This is like a really hard one that, um, I can't give a correct answer to, but um, one of the, Ooh. because when I went through like my, 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 hey, I hate trans people, like not really, but when I went through this big, like last, last, like round of discussions, um, one lady that emailed me said that um, she feels disconnected from a lot of the current discourse because like, she's a trans woman and she wants to be seen as a woman. Like that's her goal. Um, but she says Same. it feels like there's a lot of people online whose goal is to be a trans woman. Like that's the destination. Like they want to be Ugh. seen in society as a trans woman, not as a woman. And that that like makes her feel very disconnected from a lot of the very online discourse. So yeah, I don't know. No, I, like I said, I feel the exact same way. It's like oftentimes it's like people will say I'm trans and I'm proud and I'm mm -hmm. like, good for you, but the definition of being transgender is not being happy with the body you were assigned with. I am a trans woman, which means that I am not happy with the body. Like, you know, in an ideal world, everyone would just be bored in the body that they want to be, but that's not the world that we live in. I mean, and it's unfortunate that that's the case. Um, but it's like, I just wish that people could be more honest about that. Be like, hey, you know, yeah, sure. I wish I was a cis woman. I would be happier as a cis woman. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I think based on everything I've read at this point, I'd probably agree. Um, but then I guess to use, because I criticized you earlier 
um, for not letting reasonable people have conversations about trans women in sports because it seems like they only wanted to take the extremes. I guess to some extent you could argue that the reason why these opinions are as pervasive as they are today is because the trans medicalist community online um, was really, really, really gatekeepy and really shitty. Um, like if you didn't want to commit suicide, like if you weren't actively pursuing like post-op, like trans life, like you were a fake trans person. Like these people were just so unbelievably fucking toxic to anybody that didn't like meet or jump through all the hoops that they wanted them to. It's not, I guess, as surprising to me that now we're living in a world where I guess like the two cutes have taken over and now they want to be way more open to all the gender stuff as opposed to the like hardcore gatekeepers of the past. Like I understand where it comes from, you know, even if I don't agree with it. Yeah, I mean, to me, I used to be very, like, if you talked to me, like, a few years ago, I would have been, like, anti-non-binary, but obviously, I've met non-binary people who are really cool, and they've really challenged my ideas. Like, I still believe that you have to have dysphoria to be trans, mm -hmm. but I can acknowledge that there's more complicated stuff. Like, there can be non-binary dysphoria. Yeah. People don't transition in different ways, and they're still valid. So, it's like, there is growth, and even myself as a transgender woman, you know, I'm still learning things, and I think that that's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the two cutes, like, people are saying, oh, well, the true scum, the trans medicalists are gatekeeping. Mm -hmm. And it's like, a lot of the, you know, two cutes, if you're a binary trans woman, they automatically hate you. It's like, oh. <laughs> that's like, not I far enough. You're basically, say, yeah. Shut up, cis woman. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like, know. It's a, it's a, it's a hard one. I think like, like, one thing that I've learned over like through mental health discourse and now through the trend stuff too is gatekeeping is seen as a bad term, but I think gatekeeping is actually really important sometimes. Um, yeah. I have this written down somewhere, but it's like, they're, they're like there's like three really good reasons for gatekeeping. Um, one is so that people that are in those communities can find communities. That's really important um, because I, one thing that I run into over and over and over again of all the emails I get, so many trans people seem to have trouble, trans people with dysphoria seem to have trouble finding communities that they feel like they belong to because they'll join these, you know, online it's all trans women, but I guess in, in colleges it feels like it's overwhelmingly uh, I don't know what, how to say non-binary like um, AFABs, yeah, yeah, yeah. AFABs. It's all AFABs with like blue hair that are non-binary with they them pronouns. So when you get people that join, like I think this one girl was telling me, this one trans woman was telling me that she joined like this support group. It had like forty or fifty people in the in the Facebook group, and not a single person there was trying to transition. Not a single person. And what? she was like, "This doesn't feel like a community for me at all. Like I don't know what I'm supposed to be in or whatever." And then yeah, and then you also this have is like too far. What? I was just saying it's too far, keep going. Yeah, well, and then you also have kind of, there's also like a lot of natural friction there too, because I've had, um, when I read that story on Instagram, I had a few trans women email me and they go like, yeah, it sucks that like a lot of these communities are just like crazy college kids, but you also have to acknowledge that like, um, once we've made it, once we have socially and sometimes medically transitioned, at the very least with hormones, you don't really want to be part of those communities anymore. You just want like normal friends and to do normal things. Like you don't want your whole life to be dictated by like, I'm a trans person, a survivor that's in this group. I just want to be like seen as a, you know, as a woman and I live my life with my friends and that's it. Like I'm not in those groups anymore. So that's why why a lot of like, I'll say quote unquote, actual trans people get phased out of them is because there's just not much of a reason for them to be in them anymore too. So yeah, it's complicated. Oh yeah, definitely. And you know, it's another funny thing I forgot to mention before is I've had, you know, conversations with like feminists or turf spaces who are like so insistent on the fact that like, there has to be this difference between transgender women and cis women. And I'm not like dismissing the fact that like, obviously, you know, trans and cis experiences are different, right? Mm -hmm. But when you have someone like me, who's like transitioned so young, there's this weird insistence from like some people to be like, oh, well you were treated as a man when you were eight years old, therefore you'll never understand what it's like to be a woman. And it's like, why are you so obsessed on this, like such a minuscule thing? Like you're telling me I have male privilege because of when I was eight, like in all reality, like I deal with so much stuff for being a trans woman. I deal with sexism because I'm seen as a cisgender woman. Like it's such a weird thing. Mm -hmm. I yeah, it's, I've it's, been in a lot of it's definitely unique. I, I don't disagree, for sure. Um, yeah, the, the, the problems are, yeah. But then I guess, like, yeah, I guess to point out on the other end, there was that tweet a while ago where I can understand how some, um, I guess, like, AFABs, um, I guess if you, I would just say cis women, can get irritated when they see some trans people saying things like, oh, yeah, like, I have periods and everything. And it's like, okay, well, like, do you really? <laughs> or, like, what, what exactly are we talking about here, you know? Where things <laughs> cringe, are, cringe, you know? cringe. Like, and the and the whole like and there actually there was like uh there was a nugget of truth to that like um you know if you're on hormones it's possible that you have some cyclical mood swings kind of almost akin to like PMS um but yeah like the the discourse around it was just like so unbelievable you know yeah um another thing I want to mention is like there are so few like positive transgender women or transgender people in general in media like the first big trans woman was Caitlyn Jenner and as someone mm -hmm. who came out as trans in 2014 before Caitlyn Jenner. Seeing Caitlyn Jenner come out and seeing the whole trans thing be more 
public Mm -hmm. it made me kind of wish that it was like before because it was just so negative and you know that's in my opinion when all of this like really started it's kind of to slowly seep in are you just curious um how old are you i'm 22 okay okay i turned 22 in march if i say like jerry springer or maury do, do those names mean anything to you uh, I hear that Jerry Springer had this controversial show. I don't know too much about it. I don't mm-hmm. know who Mari is. One of the, they're basically the same kind of thing. Um, cool. One of the things that I had emailed to me, I'm only bringing this up because um, there was a lady that emailed me and she said that even though some of the trans people coming out today, even though it seems a little cringy, like the Chelsea Mannings or the Caitlyn Jenners or whatever, um, what it used to be was the only time you saw a trans person on TV is when you just saw like an insane uh, yes. trans person on like Jerry Springer or Mari. This is exclusively the domain of trans people. Or, or it was the only domain that would host trans people. And it was just the worst and most horrible representations ever. So, I mean, there's always gonna be like a little bit of cringy shit starting off, I, I agree. But like, it's probably better today than it was when <laughs> when it was just Jerry Springer oh, hosting. You know, undeniably, like, yeah. undeniably it's better. Um, I just think that when it comes to the trans people that we make famous, there's just like, a lot of the times we make the wrong people famous. like. You sure. know, Jessica Yaniv or freaking Christian, like all of those are like, when people hear those names, they're thinking, oh, this is an evil, awful, terrible person that's also a trans woman. And then you have these groups of people who are like, ha, see, look at all these evil trans women. And it's like, if we have more positive trans women in media, I think people would be like, oh, you know, or most people don't even know a trans woman in real life. Yeah. So it's like when you see someone like, you know, who's pretty much a normal person and it's like, oh, I wouldn't even know you were trans. Oh, that, you know, and doesn't make it their whole like identity or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think that will go a long way. The problem is that we don't have that because it's not exactly super common to be a trans woman. Yeah. And I think it was also like, I understand that there are arguments in favor of like, trans people kind of aligning themselves with um, with queer movements and with kind of like kink movements. You know, there's the whole like kink at pride that, that happens every fucking, you know, year. There's huge debates about this. Um, to some extent, I guess it's nice to be in larger communities to kind of draw power from. But then in other ways, um, it, like it always, people always like feel like it's transphobic when you say it, but like sometimes it's good to just be a little normal. <laughs> Like, if, if yes. I want to present, like, very left-wing, like, I'm, like, I have a benefit that, like, I can come off as, like, I'm a very, very, very left-leaning person, but I'm also, like, a respectable, responsible man who can talk to, like, conservative people and not come off as insane. And that's a big benefit to mm-hmm. me. And I'm also white and a man. Like, they, these things help, of course. But, like, th- there is a benefit to being kind of normal. Um, and it sucks. It's, like, like, a trans woman is just somebody that wants to be identified as a woman it doesn't have to be somebody with like blue hair 52 piercings you know like is screaming about veganism and like it doesn't and is also like a hardcore socialist you know like all like it doesn't have to be all of these things you know yeah mm-hmm. but it seems like they all kind of get like lumped together and then but then people will say like oh like you just want us to be i remember demon mama did this a huge round of like you just want them to be less trans you want them to look cis that's what you want you just want to silence their identity it's like no but like geez you know it's Okay, I'm just gonna be real. Like most people, most normal touching grass individuals, when they see a transgender person who looks normal, passes very well, they're gonna treat that person a lot nicer than the person who doesn't pass. Now, you could say that that's bigotry, you can say whatever you want about that, right? Mm -hmm. But the fact is, like, that's just how most people feel. And we can work on changing those perspectives. And I'd say, yeah, I think people should be nice to people regardless of how well they pass. I think it's very important. Mm-hmm. Um, but at, at the same time, it's like, I think the more examples of, hey, we're just normal people. I mean, that's what got like the gay movement to where it is now. I mean, you know, obviously it's not perfect, but mm-hmm. gay people have a lot more acceptance now because it's like, hey, gay people are just like normal people who just happen to be attracted to the same sex. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. You know, trans people are normal people who just happen to have you know, be born in the wrong body. Yeah. So, I, I know I shouldn't be looking at the chat, but if something ha- interesting happened there that made me want to talk about that. So, I saw someone in the chat was like basically calling me they, despite me being a trans woman. It made me think of a similar experience I've had where like these super people online will call people they when it's like, I obviously am a trans woman. I go by she, her, like mm-hmm. I make that very clear. And it's like, oh, I call everybody they. And it's like, what? So you're 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 so woke that you're misgendering me. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah. 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 Um, another, another, I guess, kind of controversial thing that I have is as a transgender woman, 
I don't like drag queens. And this is, again, oh, no. people don't talk about. I think I feel when I see that, I feel like that's a mockery of me. Like when people like a lot of transphobic ideas are like women in dresses or sorry, men in dresses. Right. And so I feel like a lot of transphobes will look at that and they'll, you know, they'll see. I feel like, like, okay, this is, so I disagree with this. I think that this okay, is something fair. that's kind of like, um, that I think is a little bit frustrating. It feels like there used to be like a very wide range of like what men and women could be like. And then as trans stuff became a little bit more mainstream online, it seems like we had to delete some of those identities because for whatever reason, I don't think there's like, if we're talking about like drag, like a person on 4chan, just like hating people or whatever like i can understand it's bad but there's like there's whole like communities built around like drag like people that do shows and like are really into it but they're like they're very much men uh, but they just they very much enjoy cross-dressing like like does cross-dressing have to necessarily be transphobic or the thing with that is like you're performing an identity that's like not true to yourself like you're not like people will say all the time oh drag is like expressing my gender like if you identify as a woman and you wear like female clothing that's cool but if you're identifying as a man and you're like oh i'm like i'm a man in a dress and you're like haha look at me i'm so funny laugh at me and then you're I mean, like i think i i don't think you, i don't think i don't think a, a cross dresser would say that it's like an expression of gender i think that for okay so from what i've read for men that cross dress it's just it's really 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 fun because they don't feel ashamed of the types of clothes and the types of clothing that women wear are is a lot of fun it's a very sensual experience so like if you're a man You have no idea what it means to say that like clothing feels good because all of our clothes are like loose, they hang off the body, it doesn't matter. But if you dress in women's clothing, there's like different types of fabrics that hug your skin in a certain way, that make you feel a certain way. And when I read people that talk about like, why do you cross dress? Because this is a question I had. Because I always wonder like, are you just like a trans person in denial? But when I read things about people that cross dress, or at least for some of the people I've read, it seems like there's a really big focus on like the feeling of wearing certain types of clothes as like a really cool experience. And then if you're part of a community, you can make like a big show out of it basically. But there's not like any kind of like transness to that identity or mockery of an identity. It's literally just like women's clothes are a lot of fun for people that cross-dress to wear. See, here's the thing, right? If mm-hmm. something is genuinely making someone happy, like, I don't want to be the person to be like, oh, let's take, like, that's not essentially, but at the same time, I can't deny that I have this feeling. And I'm sure I'm not the only one, but I feel like a lot of people, like, maybe they're too afraid, or maybe I am. I don't know. I might be alone in this. No, I, I can I can, I I can understand. I feel uncomfortable. I, yeah, I, I empathize. I feel like yeah. that's a mockery to me because it's like, you know, I'm genuinely expressing myself and that's like, that's not who you truly are. You're not being yourself. You're putting on a play. You're putting on a, like a funny little show Mm -hmm. as a false identity. And it's like, to me, that's just like offensive. Yeah. I I mean, trying to exist. I can understand the, why it would feel weird. I I don't necessarily disagree with that, but, um, yeah, I mean, I think I, I would just say that we have, there has to be like some level of understanding, um, for people in chat that are spamming question marks. Sorry. So like one of the biggest, there's like there's a huge external pressure where people will say like oh like a trans woman is a man in a dress um and sometimes unfortunately there's even like an internal pressure where trans women will just feel like they're men in dresses where they don't actually know if they're passing well where they don't know if they're making the right decision and they have these weird things so when you actually see men in dresses it can bring a lot of that up we're like fuck holy shit like maybe this is me or like these people are mocking me or like what the fuck maybe this is how people see me like i i can I don't. I don't agree that it needs to go away, but I can like empathize with the fr- with the with the frustration, I mean, with the confusion. That's like, all. I understand, I, that's yeah. all I can reasonably ask for sure, at yeah. the end of the day. Like, I'm not gonna like go up and be like, "You have to stop." Like, mm-hmm. that's not what I'm saying. I'm just like, "Hey, you know, can we acknowledge that?" Like, yeah, this kind of bothers me a bit. Um, I have one of those moments where it's like I had something in mind I was gonna say and then I just forgot it. Mm-hmm. Even when that happens. Um something to do with like the trans women and like i don't necessarily think it's blackface but it's like i i think about like you know their similarities i i don't know wait say that oh oh like you view like cross dressers as like basically no, trans I, women I, doing I black said, face i don't or? think it's blackface but uh-huh. i think there's similarities sure i can i can understand what you're saying yeah yeah so it's like, oh yeah, I remember what I was gonna say. So there's a lot of the arguments I hear is that drag is actually good because it helps trans people early in their situation 
where they're like, oh, oh they can basically to flirt with an identity. Yeah, that's what I hear. And I understand that. But it's like, to me, it's like if you're putting on a dress and you're being laughed at because people think the idea of a man in a dress is funny. That's not like good for you. And I feel like there's better ways to express that. Like, I, I get the idea. And like people will say, oh, well, drag is essential because it's part of like the LGBT community. Like this is your own community. I don't. It's like I, I see those points. I don't necessarily agree. Sure, I can empathize. I understand. Okay. But I mean, like, I mean, I would also say, like, people that are doing drag, like, if you're at a drag show, you're not there to just laugh at them. Like, it's like they genuinely appreciate what they're doing. They take a lot of time into preparing Obama. their outfits and everything and all of this shit. So, I mean, like, it's it, like, it is a real thing. It's not just like, like, pe like if you're going to a drag show, it's not just going to be a bunch of guys that, like, went to Goodwill, bought, like, a dress and, like, oh, my God, like, I look so gay. Like, look at me, LOL. You know, like, it's going to be people that put a great deal of time into, you know, like, a lot of these guys are better at their makeup than even, like, women are. Like, they, they put a lot of time into doing what they do. But do. isn't that, like, a sexist comment to make? Because, like, I've heard, like, turfs and stuff be like, these drag women pass more than you. And it's like, that's, like, insanely transphobic. And it's like, you can't deny that there is, like, some connection there and like a lot of like i mean they just really like cross-dressing i mean <laughs> what are you gonna say like I, yeah i mean it's 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 a really complicated intersection of like gender and uh, uh, of, of gender identity and gender expression it's like blowing up those two worlds almost because so much of gender expression is tied to clothes and we hope that our gender expression aligns with our gender identity right this is kind of the concept of dysphoria is that is bringing those two things in alignment so it's weird to see somebody that is blowing those two things apart as much as possible because cross-dressers very much are like I am a man, like there's no question about it, but I love women's oh, yeah. clothing, right? So that, it does, like it definitely blows those two worlds apart. And I can understand the, I can understand the difficulty or frustration of like being on either side of that for sure, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. um, Femboys, I saw someone talk about femboys. I kind of feel the same way. Uh, I don't know how I feel. I just, I think it's, it's cringy. Honestly, I think the I've problem for me, mostly. the biggest problem I have was when, I don't know how many are still doing this, but femboys on Twitter started using she, her pronouns. Some of them did. And I'm like, wait, what the no. fuck? Yeah, I know. And I'm like, what is even happening? Now I don't even know what the fuck is no. going on. Yeah. Femboy, she, her. So you're calling yourself a boy. But you, yeah. But you're putting she, her pronouns. It's like the complete opposite. It's so backwards. Yeah. This is what I'm talking about. Some people on Twitter can like really ruin it. Because mm -hmm. I, I just imagine you're like a normal person living your life. You don't know anything about trans people. And then you see femboy, she, her pronouns. You're going to think that all trans people are insane. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. It's like, it's not good optics. I like, I just cringe so hard. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know. Gatekeeping literally everything. I mean. Yeah. Is there, do you have like any, I, I would like honest opinion. Do you have like any like steamy hot takes on trans people? Cause like I'm willing, you know, I won't get like super offended. Like, is, is there like anything you've been like itching to say? Like. Not really. I think most of my takes are pretty far left. Maybe the athlete. Okay, cool, cool. For a while, I didn't know if I believed that uh, non-binary people existed. I'm not sure how I feel about that. But I got like a ton of emails from non-binary people that would describe the dysphoria to me. So like, yeah, maybe I guess. Um, you know what? I'm a trans woman and the exact same thing happened to me. Sure. So, yeah. The, um, the only other thing that seems to be difficult is that like, I wish that for children, there was like a really healthy space to explore gender. And it seems like that's not possible right now because people on the right wanna make that space completely destroyed and then people on the left don't wanna ask hard questions. Like not every 14 year old that's depressed is trans, right? Um, and you know, there are gonna be some people that are being pushed in one direction or another that probably shouldn't be. Um, and it's just, it's really hard to create like a really good faith space for everybody to like just be able to explore their gender identity and all that without feeling that like they're judged, they're pushing one direction. I wish that that was possible, but yeah, it's just hard. Well, that's the thing is like people can have, people can express themselves however they want. I feel like there's this weird idea in society that like people are being pushed by society to be transgender. And it's mm -hmm. like, if you squint and you look at it with bad faith, maybe, 
maybe you can say that, oh, in some cases, right? But it's like, I don't think people are just like, a cis person isn't going to be like, wow, I'm trans. I didn't know that, but I saw a trans person on TV. So suddenly I feel like I'm in the wrong body. Like, I don't feel like that's... Yeah, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I don't think it's like, I see trans people now, I become trans. I think it's more just the idea that like, um, children can have like a lot of issues that um, can maybe seem like transness or like if you are like if you're somebody and you've got either depression or body issues or whatever like there could be a lot of things going on it might be possible that you stumble on a certain youtube channels or you start talking to a gender confirmation or a gender therapist or whatever um and eventually you're kind of pushing the seat like yeah you're trans and maybe you feel like wow i think this is actually yeah this is it this is going to solve all my problems or whatever but not really and you don't really spend an appropriate amount of time like introspecting or with like the proper guidance like trying to figure out if this is the right answer and i think that's a really difficult thing that uh, that's a really difficult conversation to have, I think. Um, yeah. Well, I think that this really comes down to just like an honesty and like therapy. And it goes back to like the young kids transitioning because there's this big conversation. Like you have to be, it's really hard because it's a, a tough line to cross. You have to be honest in like these conversations and mm -hmm. like bring up these options to make sure that there's no other underlying problem. Yeah. But you have to do it in a way that's like, you know, we're not just trying to erase trans women. We're not just trying to prevent trans women from transitioning. Mm -hmm. It's a very tough line to cross. Yeah, it's for like sure. A lot of times I don't trust people to have good faith in that because there's a lot of people who are transphobic and are just, they don't want any trans children to transition. Obviously when these laws are passed, these anti-trans children transitioning, mm -hmm. that's where they go. They say all trans women shouldn't transition. This is child abuse, blah, blah. Yeah. And obviously that's way too extreme. I assume we, both of us don't agree with that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah yeah, but, yeah i mean i agree yeah it's it's yeah like i said it's restating yeah it's just it's really hard to find somebody that can have a like really good responsible conversation in the middle without seeming like they're wanting to push like really hard at either end which is frustrating my problem with this though is like can we ever get to a point where systemically we can trust every therapist in the country to be an expert in this situation know exactly when and it's like no i mean every you know, every so many trans people, there's going to be someone that detransitioned. There's mm -hmm. going to be someone that's a mistake. Um, but for the vast majority of people, it is a positive thing. So I say we just try to educate these people the best of their ability. Um, we try to rule out any other underlying stuff. And if it's like, make sure that this person has this for it, makes person, you know, this person is genuinely dealing with stuff. Um, but overall, like, yeah, I do think that there's a way to deal with this that isn't, you know, so extreme as to ban trans women or so extreme as to like, you know, say that you're all valid. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I saw this comment in the chat before. I need this person to explain how a trans woman isn't doing female blackface. That just okay. sounds like somebody that doesn't believe in trans people. <laughs> Yeah, that, that person does not seem to be pro-trans. Mm -hmm. So my, me being a woman is not like, I genuinely live as a woman every day of my life. I'm not impersonating anybody. I'm just living my true genuine experience. Whereas like someone who's like on a stage performing isn't living their true experience. So to claim that those two are the same thing is incredibly disingenuous. So I just wanted to address that real quick. I know that's like, not a great argument um but yeah i just wanted to address that sure um anything else um i saw someone mention he him lesbians yeah th those are pretty cringe like you can't be those at the same time yeah, no, um i feel like i've i've pretty much covered pretty much everything i'm i'm pretty happy with this conversation thank you for having me on okay cool well hey thanks for chatting um yeah stay safe be careful yeah yeah of course, keep doing the good work that you're doing. I, I really, I really do think that you're doing a positive thing, um, giving people platforms and like spreading, you know, positive stuff. I want to see more like positive trans stuff from you. Um, but obviously, I totally support having conversations with people who, you know, hopefully get them more on our side. Sure. So well, I have a trans debate with um, Elijah Schaefer in like three days in Tennessee. So, hey, well, good luck with that. I will be watching and I'll be wishing you the best of luck. Yeah, thanks a lot. I appreciate the conversation.